Actually, he may. I think just queen takes b7, maybe but okay. Okay, then knight f6 and take and take. GF and knight it. takes a1, and you're gonna end up two pawns up in right. an opposite colored bishop endgame. Some practical chances, maybe. Okay, fair play to Jordan. He's uh, complicated things slightly. He's at least making Nordebeck pause. And uh, as you say, maybe you have to be slightly careful here with black. And just before we show that variation, maybe we can get Stockfish's help. How many moves give black the advantage? Are there more than one or two? It might just be one, honestly, but let's two see. Two moves give a winning position. One move throws away the bulk of the advantage. And uh, luckily here for Nodebeck, those are the two most obvious moves. So he will play one of these two for sure. I think the safest, as you mentioned there, is queen takes b7. Also the best move, giving away the queen, returning the sacrifice because this check jumping out the way with the white knight will win the queen here you can maybe even take with either piece either piece uh take it with the pawn the safest after the queen is recaptured knight takes bishop and uh yeah two pawns up should be more than enough majority on this side of the board and majority in the center as well and it's happening david as you're mentioning this is the best option for Nodebeck. he finds it the queen will be given back but it has a big potential for black in this position up on the clock up on the position is this close to a Nodebeck queen yes very close he's gone with the bishop and i think this is even better <laughs> oh yeah Surgical precision again from Noderbeck. That's that's what he did against Caruana. Doesn't give these guys a single chance. He always pauses at the right moment. He never does anything automatically. How many bonds is that? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Two extra bonds. One apostle on the king side. One on the queen side. And weaknesses on the queen side. A3, B3, we see for Jordan Van Forest. Once that rook slides up the board to the third rank, you are targeting all the white bonds. Yeah, you mentioned that term surgical precision there, Dania. And I think this last move really key. If the bishop had just moved to a kind of random safe square, white would have had the time to push the A pawn up one and maybe at least create a blockade of black's queenside majority there. But now white's rook is forced to decide where to go. Black, I don't think, will uh, give white that luxury of setting up a blockade on the light squares. I think the weaknesses are going to count. Maybe there's something even more... Uh, kind of immediate than just slowly advancing those black pawns. Really just clinical play here by Nodebeck. Opposite color bishop. So maybe there's still work to be uh -oh. done here. Good technique to be shown or not. The third pawn drops. Yikes. There's another one. Maybe bishop c8, rook Bro. takes b3, rook takes e6 can be tried as a last ditch attack. But bishop c8 <laughs> is pathetic. You can play king f8. I would try it though. I would go bishop c8. Yeah. My dirty bullet mind oh, supplying man. the one move tricks. But a I, class we can just And we do classical. have a result. <laughs> Jordan Van Furis does resign after that last move as the third pawn mm -hmm. will fall, which means that Nodebeck takes the lead in their match. Jordan has to win the final rapid game to take it to the Armageddon. What a game with the black pieces.